Hello everybody and welcome to my second of two videos on this, the Nikon EM. The, in the first video we talked about what everything on this camera is. In this video we're going to talk about what it does and how to use it for your photography. Now first up, there's not a whole lot we can do with this camera without putting batteries in it. I mean we could, but we're not going to be able to access the full range of shutter speeds without batteries in this camera. So we're going to Unscrew the battery cap just with a standard US nickel or similar coin from whatever your currency is. And this camera takes two 357 type batteries. This, this little, oops, let's turn this on its back. This little plastic thing is supposed to be nestled in the battery cap there. Okay, so this takes two 357 type batteries. Those are also called LR44, A76, S76, AG13, and I think there's a couple of other designations for them. And uh, one tip I'll give you on batteries is don't skimp on them for your own cameras. Like, the batteries I'm gonna put in here are both generic batteries from everyone's favorite online mega retailer. Uh, they're no-name brands. I've had problems with both of these swelling inside of cameras within a few days of being both of these brands swelling inside of cameras within a few days of being put inside of a camera so just spend the extra money and buy one of the established name brand batteries you will be very happy you did it if the cheap battery explodes in your camera and ruins it okay so here's the battery cap and you can see that symbol on the battery cap for the two batteries those are the, the two batteries we're going to use, and that indicates how they get loaded into this plastic holder. Just like this, and you will know you've loaded them correctly. If you can read, there we go, the text on the top of the battery when you are holding the battery uh, holder in your hands like this. Okay, batteries loaded into the battery holder. We're just going to pop them into the bottom of the camera. We're just going to screw them in until they stop. This should be a very easy thing to do. If you get resistance when you put your battery cap into the battery chamber, you want to back it out and try it again. It is possible to cross thread a battery cap like this and doing that can damage your camera. Best case scenario, you have to replace the battery cap. Worst case scenario, you have to replace the base plate of your camera. So we're going to I wasn't cross-threading them there, I just backed them out too far, and now I've gotten myself into a world of hurt. Because this plastic thing does not connect on mine. <laughs> I will say that is one big frustration with this model of camera and other Nikons, is that that plastic thing is mandatory. Okay, so now the batteries are in the camera. What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the batteries we just put in are good. And you should see that light turns red, that indicates that the batteries are good and inserted correctly. So if you put batteries in and that light doesn't turn on, first thing you want to do is try putting the batteries in the other way and making sure that you've loaded them correctly. If it still doesn't turn on, the batteries are probably dead. Um, or you might just need to clean up the battery chamber a little bit to give a good connection between the batteries and the camera. Now that we've got the batteries loaded in the camera, let's swap out lenses so that you can see how to do it. To remove the lens, you're going to push down on the lens release button over here. We're going to rotate this counter or anti-clockwise and then just remove it. Now lenses can be removed at any time when you're not taking a picture without affecting your images. And I'm going to show you why doing something you should never ever do with your own camera. Lifting up the mirror, you can see in there you've got your shutter curtain, just like that. And that shutter curtain is there and closed whenever a photo is not being taken, and that protects your film from being ruined when you change lenses. So we're going to grab a different lens. In this case, we're going to grab this absolutely spectacular Series E 100mm f2.8 and put this onto the camera instead. Okay, we're going to put the 50mm back on just like that. All right, and so you've changed lenses. Very easy, very simple thing to do. Now I'm gonna show you how to load film in your camera. Loading film, also really easy. First thing we're gonna do is lift up 
film rewind knob to get into the camera. Just like that. I'm gonna grab our roll of film. I'm gonna drop it into the film cassette chamber. Just like that. I'm gonna pull out a leader. We're gonna make sure that we're in M90 mode just because if we have the camera sitting like this and we're in auto mode, I, I think this one could give us a long shutter speed. No, it won't. Okay. Anyway, I guess with this camera, it must not matter which mode we're in. I'm just always in the habit of putting it in a mechanical mode when I load film. Okay, back on track. We're gonna trigger the shutter and with our fingers away from it, of course, we're gonna put the leader into the take up spool like that. Advance the film. And at this point, if you're really confident in your ability to load film, I am not, you can close the film back. I always like to do one more frame just to make sure that everything's being taken up smoothly. Now we can close the film back. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate this in the direction of the arrow until we get resistance just to take any slack out of film. We don't wanna crank it, we don't wanna damage anything, just until you can't push it any further. We're gonna make sure that our ASA is set to the proper speed we put in. Let's say we put in 200 ISO film. So we're gonna set the ASA. Next, we're going to advance until we get to the one, which is three frames. And there we go. We've loaded film. That's exactly how we do it. You're gonna go through your day and you're gonna take your photos Actually, I'm going to leave this in, Let's see if I can get a different shutter speed. Ooh, there we go. So you're going to go through your day and you're going to take your photos and you're going to go through your roll of film. When you're done with your roll of film, what you're gonna do is rewind it. And to rewind it, you hold this button on the bottom down, and then you rewind it with a film rewind knob. And we'll see how to do that in a second. But before we do that, I wanna show you what happens inside your camera with your film. Now first, film is one and done. If you open up the back of your camera when you have film in here, all of the film, all of the photos you've taken or could take with that film will be erased. So film can record and can can record light one time in a controlled manner with a proper shutter speed and exposure or in an uncontrolled manner like this. If this were a real, real roll of film that I were using, everything here to the end, all of those photos I've taken would be erased, okay? But I want you to see how the film works inside of your camera. When you take a photo, it's pulled out of the cassette here. The, the photo's exposed right here. When you advance it, the film is pulled out of this cassette into where that previous piece of film was and then taken up on the advance spool over on this side. And that's why you might have noticed when we loaded the film, the film rewind knob turns in the opposite direction of the arrow whenever we advance the film because we're advancing the film across the back of the camera like that. Now, when you finish your roll of film, Again, bearing in mind, keeping your film back closed the entire time. You're going to hold the or press the film rewind button down on this model. And now you can just rewind it. One of the nice things about having the, doing this correctly with the film door closed is that you don't have to hold your thumb here and try to rewind this awkwardly. And so you can see by rewinding the film, it takes it back into the cassette. You can generally hear that sound outside of the camera when you get close to the end of the roll. So you rewind the film the whole way, and now at this point, it's safe to open up the back of your camera, and you can take your film out. If you're gonna load another roll of film and keep shooting, just grab it and load it. If you're not, close the film back. Make sure you trigger the camera's shutter button before you're done for the day and send this off to the lab to be developed. Next, let's talk about how to use a flash with this camera. The camera has a hot shoe on top, but it does not have any other way to connect a flash. So you'll have to do one of two things. You'll either have to plug a flash into the top or get an RF transceiver that you can connect to your flash itself. 
I personally don't recommend RF units with cameras that are manual focus because it's just a little bit of a hassle unless you have the flashes mounted somewhere to hold a flash and try to focus and try to take a picture at the same time. So generally speaking with this camera, the way it was designed is that you would put a flash onto the hot shoe and that this flash would be used to take pictures with the camera. Okay. I'm going to turn this sideways to make it a little bit easier to see here in the same in the frame. But this right here is the worst possible orientation for a flash and a camera. The light will leave the flash, reach your subject, bounce back to your lens and to your film. The light leaves like a flat wave, reaches your subject and returns like a flat wave. It makes your subjects look, well, flat. It's not flattering to any single subject. So when you use a flash, the most important thing you can do with this camera, well, aside from making sure you're set to M90, because that's going to be your flash sync speed, is to use the flash light to mimic natural light. So think about the way that we see people outside with the sun above us, or at night underneath street lamps, or indoors with overhead lighting. Light, as we see people, comes from above. So at minimum, you want to get yourself an articulating flash that can point the light up at a ceiling, or a reflector is an okay option, but a ceiling's better, so that the light leaves the flash, bounces off the ceiling, back to your subject, and back to your lens, and replicates a look that our brains are wired to seeing as natural and normal. And that will help your flash give you images that flatter your subject. Even better than just an articulating flash is one that can also swivel. So if you're in a space that doesn't have a roof or has a very high roof or one that's painted dark, you could always swivel your flash off to the side and bounce it off of a wall. That would give you the ability then to, it won't be quite as good as bouncing it off of the ceiling, but this will allow you to replicate bounce light which can still give you really good results with your flash if it's mounted on top of the camera like it has to be with this camera. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is talk about how to take a picture with this camera. Then we'll go over the exposure compensation button on the front, and then we'll talk about how to do a double exposure. Okay, so to take a picture with this camera, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick your mode, bulb, manual 90, or auto. If you're in auto mode, what you're going to do is you're going to adjust your aperture and inside of your viewfinder, there's a single needle and that needle over on the side points to a list of numbers that go from one second to one one thousandth. And as you adjust your aperture, that needle is going to move up and down. And what it's going to tell you is that at the aperture you've selected, it's going to go with whatever number it's pointing at. That's your shutter speed. And that way you'll know before you take a picture what your automatic shutter speed will be. I believe that this camera also has a stepless shutter, so if it's between two numbers, it should be a shutter speed that's approximately halfway between those numbers. I seem to recall reading that for this model. Uh, anyway, that's how you read the, the meter inside of the camera. That only applies to auto mode, and the needle, needle will only adjust when you adjust either the aperture or the level of lighting in your scene adjusts, and then you'll know what kind of shutter speed you're going to get. So you put it in auto mode, you select your aperture, make sure you're ready to go. You look through the viewfinder back here, you focus to get your subject in focus, and you take your picture. And that's it. It is that easy to take a photo with the Nikon EM. It's very simple. The Nikon EM does give you some ability to control your exposure in a very limited situation. Let's say, for instance, that you are sitting in the shade of a tree, and then there's a big open field behind you, and you're there with one of your friends and you want to take a picture of them. If you hold down this button while you take your photo, it will adjust the shutter speed so that you have a little bit more light reaching the film, which will make your friend prop in the shade with you properly exposed, even though at the cost of the field behind being a little bit overexposed. 
And that's what this button right here does, and that's how you use it in the very specific situation that you would use it in when you're taking photos with this camera. What about double exposures? Double exposures are not too difficult with this camera, as is the case with most automatic cameras. So let's say that you are in auto mode and you are at f5.6, and the camera says 1 1 25th of a second is your proper exposure, and you take a photo, and you have now given the film a proper amount of light. Well, you need half as much light for a double exposure. And the reason for that is if 1 1 25th and f5.6 is a proper exposure and you give two proper exposures to a piece of film, it's going to come back what's called thick, dark, and or dense. Those are three words that mean the same thing, which is the film received too much light. In a digital workflow, it's going to have a lot of digital noise and you're going to lose a lot of contrast. In a print, in a traditional darkroom workflow, you're going to lose a lot of contrast and your printing will take a very long time with that thick negative. So you want to try to avoid that with your double exposures. So you can take double exposures with this camera. What you need to do is trick it into giving you less light, half as much light, and you do that with the ASA dial. So 200 ISO film needs half as much light as 100. 100 needs half as much light as 50. 400 needs half as much light as, if you said 200, you'd be right. So we put 200 ISO film in this camera, let's say. We want to do a double exposure. First, we're going to adjust the ISO or ASA dial to 400. This is going to force the camera to give the film half as much light as it needs, so two images on the same frame will be one properly exposed double exposure. We're going to leave it in auto mode, take our first photo. Next, we're going to hold the film rewind button. We're going to press and hold the film rewind button. We're going to hold the film rewind knob. And now we're going to advance the film, just like that. Let me demonstrate that again. Hold the film rewind button on the bottom, hold the film rewind knob, and advance the film, okay? It's a bit fiddly. What that does is that disengages the film advance mechanism while rearming the shutter. Now, you can take your second shot in your double exposure. If you're done with your double exposures, there's a couple things left to do. First, dial your ASA back to the correct setting of 200. Otherwise, the entire rest of your roll of film is going to come out underexposed. Next, we're going to set this to M90, and I'll explain why in a second. Set the aperture to your smallest number, and we're going to put the lens cap back on. Oops, we're going to advance the film. And now we're going to take a dead frame and advance again. Ah, dang it. And we can now go back to shooting normally. Okay, so why do we take a dead frame? When you start advancing the film after a double exposure, because you've messed with the way that the gearing is lined up, you start advancing the film and it doesn't immediately start to track across the camera. You have to advance the film a partial frame. And then the gearing will re-engage and then the double exposure will start to advance. So your double exposure would be right behind the shutter. Might only advance like that. So if you take another image without your dead frame, your double exposure is going to overlap that image, potentially ruining both your double exposure and your next photo. That dead frame prevents your double exposure and your next photo from overlapping and ruining each other. That is it. That is everything you can do with the Nikon EM. One of the uh, easiest to use, admittedly sleekest 80s cameras out there that, uh, that you can pick up and still today take quite competent photos with. There's, there, if you're looking for an easy shooting experience, there is nothing whatsoever wrong with using a Nikon EM. Thank you everyone for watching. If this video was helpful and useful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track and that I'm producing and creating content which is helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about responding every couple of days and answering whatever questions you have to the best of my ability. If you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos about how to use cameras photographic techniques, or the best practices for the tools of the trade, uh, 
By all means, please subscribe and check that notifications bell to be alerted when new content arrives. If you'd like to support the channel by joining with a membership, there are now membership options for this channel at different tiers that will give you different benefits if you would be interested in that. And one last thing, thank you everyone very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next videos. Won't we, Steinbeck? What's that look about?